question. My name's uh, Amar, and I run a variety of projects. Uh, today, we're going to be discussing unusual activity, the seven most powerful information sources for stock traders. Um, my goal with today's presentation is to give you a ton of education that you can take away and apply to your own trading. Um, but before we get going, uh, let me tell you a little bit about us and uh, what we do. We're a, a trader research team with a combined 47 years plus of market experience. Everyone on our team is a professional trader. That's what we do for a living. And you know, as we trade together, we've also developed these additional products uh, based upon what we do and expanding our our own research. So we provide. Uh, research on the technical side of things and also on the fundamental side of things uh, to professional traders. We work with guys in hedge funds, prop firms, individual traders at home, a wide variety in you know, different groups of people. Um, the two projects that we run that have uh, a great free element, uh, one is financialjuice.com. Uh, which I highly recommend you guys check out. Uh, it's completely free. It's a real-time news platform. We have voice news and text-based news and all kinds of great stuff. Uh, and there's a community there and you can talk to lots of different people. So it's a really great place to hang out. Um, also, if you're looking for pivot points and you know, support and resistance levels, uh, Fibonacci market profile levels that are you know, free uh, via a free data sheet, to the tick.com, which is our a technical analysis um, research product, definitely do check those out. And but both of these have you know completely free research that you can uh, partake in and basically uh, sign up to. So definitely do check those out. So now, guys, on to the main presentation today. What we're going to be talking about? Um, the key question that we're going to be answering and reflecting and thinking about is what influences a stock's price. So that's a question to everyone in the room. Type into the text chat, what influences a stock's price? So whilst you guys are typing in your answers, I'm going to get going with our definition and what we do and how we look at this type of information. So what influences a stock's price? So we kind of break this information down into two main dimensions, two main segments. So a ton of answers coming through. News, buyers and sellers, earnings growth, big institutionalized buyers, supply and demand, absolutely. absolutely. Those, are, those are all right answers. I'm, I'm kind of hearing a lot of supply and demand. Um, so that's, that's good stuff. Great stuff. Everyone's, everyone's joining in. Good to see. Um, so what influences a stock's price? So you've got two dimensions, the quantifiable information and the unquantifiable information. So quantifiable information is things like, you know, that take into account what we know about a stock. So it's fundamentals, the industry, the earnings, outlook, etc. This is, you know, what you would see if you look at the, the prospectus of a stock or, you know, you're getting you know, information from that, that company itself. Um, the unquantifiable side of things, where things get interesting, is general sentiment towards a stock. It's the feelings people have towards a stock on the whole, and these two factors kind of interrelate because some of the quantifiable stuff can come out with very short notice and have an influencing factor on the sentiment and feelings towards a stock. And what we care about is both of these factors. We care about the quantifiable information and the unquantifiable information because they both have an influence on how a stock moves over different time horizons, but they do definitely have an influence. What influence do they have? Essentially, what they're influencing is the market's perception, how individual participants in the market view a particular stock. These two factors, quantifiable and unquantifiable, affect this overall view of the market. And what, you know, ultimately what that means is perception equals price. Perception equals price. Perception of reality is what equals price, right? Not necessarily what is true, but the perception of what is true and how that information is likely to influence that stock's movement in, in the future. That's what you're seeing when you see these relatively short-term movements 
statements. I mean, we just had something crazy happen with Twitter, uh, a, you know, uh, a few minutes ago, uh, where their earnings were kind of leaked. So information like that can have a massive impact uh, on the movement of a stock, and it's unquantifiable. You know, people weren't aware that this information would be leaked and coming out uh, at the time that it did. So it altered the perception that traders have of that stock. So, what is our goal? What are we trying to achieve as traders? What are we trying to do? <laughs> Your goal as a trader is to look for and react to information that will cause a shift in this perception. To react to and uh, react to information that will cause a shift in this perception. And a shift in perception will ultimately result in what a lot of you guys mentioned, a change in supply and demand. Right? There's something that's influenced the markets and market participants that's resulted in their desire for that stock to increase or decrease, uh, and ultimately that will result in a change in price. And that, that's what the market is. I mean, this sounds very, very basic, but I think a lot of people forget that when they get you know, lost behind their charts and this type of thing. Ultimately, what you are seeing on your charts is supply and demand which is resulting in a change in price. That's essentially what's taking place. So what information creates this shift in perception? Um, what information that is available in the marketplace that any traders can get hold of uh, that, uh, that can have this paradigm, paradigm shift, paradigm, paradigm shifting effect on a stock? So guys, in this next segment of, uh, of the presentation, we're going to be running through some of the big key pieces of information that we pay attention to, that are the big focus for us, and that are likely to influence the price of the stock over both the long term and what we focus on most, which is the short term time horizon. So let's begin uh, at the beginning, which is breaking macro news. So when we get to the more important stuff, the bigger focus is for us. I'll highlight those, but we're going to start with breaking macro news. And everyone here, I'm sure, knows what this is. Um, these are the major economic releases. These are GDP figures, non-farm payroll, all these types of things that are schedulized, often schedulized, um, and have a massive impact across all the asset classes. Um, we're also talking about things like important speeches. You know, if Janet Yellen uh, is is giving her testimony. This type of thing can have a massive influence. Um, the situation that we're seeing in Greece, um, this can have a very profound influence, um, w the influence of which is kind of diminishing at the moment. But when we did have the big hoo-ha going on uh, a, a few weeks ago, that there, there, there was a, a very powerful influence on that information. Um, also, statements regarding you know major global economic powers. You know, if Standard & Poor's is downgrading um, the US or you know a, a major country that can have an influence on stocks on bonds and lots of different things so also statements that are influencing interest rate perception so you know when we're talking here about you know the statements that the FOMC releases uh, we're, we're talking about you know uh, these events in which Janet Yellen is discussing the market we're talking about you know the ECB State, uh, press statements, these types of things can have a profound effect on the perception of where interest rates are likely to go. And it's often, you know, traders are fixated with a single word that Janet Yellen did or did not say. Um, and, you know, it's, it's that nuance where single words are what people are paying attention to, what traders are paying attention to, uh, in order to see the influencing factor that that can have on individual stocks. Does that make sense so far, guys? Give me some yeses in the chat. And we're going to keep the presentation relatively short today. I want to focus on the Q&A um, so you guys can ask any questions uh, that you have. OK, so the next area of focus is technicals. Now, there's a lot of things that you can pay attention when it comes to technical information. On the stock side of things, we keep things relatively simple. We look for major support and resistance areas. Um, which are likely to be, you know, areas that market participants pay attention to. Uh, stocks hitting 52-week highs and lows. This seems to be 
a piece of technical information that a lot of people pay attention to. And that and new highs and new lows. It's, it's a relatively simple piece of information, but it really seems to draw the attention of a wide range of traders. Professionals, individuals, they, they seem to focus on these two little factors quite a lot. And the other thing to pay attention to is patterns, but less so uh, when it comes to this type of influence. Okay, so on with the breaking news. Now, we, we, spoke, more, we spoke originally about macro-based news. Now, we're going to delve into some more micro news. And this is nuanced towards an individual stock or sector in and of itself. So, we're talking uh, about things like deals. You know, when a, uh, a major company strikes a deal with another major company or they decide that they're going to have a merger, or uh, you know that one company is going to be developing chips for the other. These types of deals, obvious information, these types of deals can result in significant movements in individual stocks. And it's this that you pay attention to. But the nuance is the importance of this information is about relating that information to other stocks that are affected within that sector. Um, and the key thing is to pay attention to uh, news that hasn't yet been priced in, because the news that hasn't been priced in is what is likely to result in the biggest movements uh, in terms of the individual stock. So if it's news that hasn't been priced in and it's, it's a big deal for that individual stock, it's likely to have a profound effect. Uh, effect. When you have items and news that have been in the rumor mill for a while, they can't, even if it's something massive, because it's been around for a while, been spread on the desks, um, there tends to be that buy the rumor, sell the news type of influence, uh, and this can have a significant effect in influencing um, uh, influencing how the the traders in the market view that particular stock. So, okay, um, so we're also talking about things like industry news. So, how an overall industry is viewed um, and the effect uh, that that can have on that particular stock and market overall. Okay, so um, uh, following on with some more breaking news information, TV mentions, right? This is, this is what we're breaking down here is all the information that can have a profound effect on, on the news, and it's pretty uh, on a stock, and it's pretty, you know, logical based information so far. We're going to get a little kind of crazy in a little while, but we're talking about things like TV mentions. You know, whether a stock is mentioned on CNBC by a known guru, um, a, a someone that people respect, and because they're on this. Um, uh, on this platform that can give them a wide berth of listeners like CNBC or Bloomberg, it's likely to have a profound effect on how traders view that stock, the sentiment towards it. Um, it can also ignite the rumor mill um, and, and have a very powerful influencing factor on that stock. So news, breaking news especially, has this effect of shifting the perception or view of a stock and its price and it can be profound and massive. You know, it's a, it can result in a very, very sudden shift in how a stock is, stock is viewed just by, you know, a, a great deal coming into, into the marketplace. Or, um, you know, the, the, the CEO who has been a massive influence in that stock, um, you know, uh, dying or something, of, something like that. That's a bit morbid, but you know what I mean. These, these types of big influencing factors that can result in a change in the paradigm or sentiment towards a stock. Okay, so next um, we're going to look at upgrades and downgrades. Now, this is pretty straightforward, simple stuff. Um, this is information that's sent out um, all day long. Uh, you'll see a lot of this kind of thing bounded about where you've got these uh, professional investors providing you know, their view and opinion about a particular stock. And these influential analysts can have a major impact on the short-term uh, movement of certain stocks. 
and it, it's funny because all it is, is is an expression of this is our view this is how we look at this particular stock they're not giving you any fundamental information they're not giving you any breakdown of why they think that way it's oftentimes just a simple case of we're downgrading stock X from a, a buy to a neutral and but it just seems to have a profound effect based upon who is providing that information um, and that kind of describes the overall neuroses in the market where it's uh, in many cases can be um, a, a sheep following sheep type of situation where traders are just following what other large traders are doing but that results in other traders following those traders and it creates this avalanche snowball type of effect but that doesn't matter what matters is that the um, what what doesn't matter is the information itself what matters is the effect that it has and our ability to profit from that effect so you know you've got guys like Goldman Sachs or Bank of America Credit Suisse and there's quite a few smaller firms out there that are influencers that can have these profound effects on how a stock is viewed and cause these large changes um, in the stock's price. Okay, so uh, another big one um, is is earnings, right? Where we're in earnings season right now, and it's causing you know all kinds of crazy things to happen to a stock's price. Earnings are essentially the profit that a company makes, and analysts will base their future value of a company uh, on its earning projections, which obviously and ultimately will influence the perception of that stock perception influences the supply and demand and the supply and demand will ultimately result in what the price of that stock so earnings season the, the, there's a key fundamental thing that you know when you, you pay attention to when it comes to earnings it's about expectation versus actual it's about what all these you know inverted commas smart people think these influences the Goldman Sachs these uh, you know well-known uh, market participants think versus what the company is actually producing and it's quite arbitrary it's just you know an outsider's perspective compared to the actual view or the actual information that the company provides if a company surprises we see a move it's as simple as that if a company surprises uh, in 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 that sense we will see an overall movement in stock in the stock Okay, so now this is now we're going to head into what we pay a lot of attention to, and that is things like insider transactions. This is a big focus for us uh, at Unusual Activity. Um, we we pay a lot of attention to um, like the information that you, we've discussed so far. That's available in in a, a lot of different places, and there's a lot of people that put that information out there. What we're going to start delving into, like from now and going forward is our kind of un more unique focus and what we pay a lot of attention to. So insider transactions is a big, big deal for us. Uh, company directors and CEOs who are making purchases um, of you know, their own stock, it has a massive influencing factor because it gives you an insider view of confidence or, or lack thereof in a business, right? Because if you're um, a CEO of a company and you're, you know, buying stock hand in fist, hand over fist, it says a lot about how you view that company. And often, you know, obviously there can be games being played with this type of thing. But generally speaking, if someone is putting their own net worth on the line for a stock, um, you know, it's going to be because they believe in what they're doing. They believe in what the company is doing. They believe in the overall vision for what, you know, for what that company uh, is heading towards. And it's a key thing to pay attention to because these insiders have, of course, you know, the big influence on that stock. They're the ones that make things happen. They're the ones that develop the products. They're the ones that bring things to market, and they are the ones that will ultimately result in the price of the stock being driven up because of the actions they take. Um, another thing that we pay attention to are search anomalies. So you know, there's a plethora of search data available you know through Google Trends and there's some bespoke uh, providers out there as well and you can use this data to basically learn uh, about in real time how a stock is being viewed and overall 
uh, how search data is, how a stock is influenced by search data and market participants. Because what a lot of participants do is search for that stock. You know, if they're thinking of buying, if they're thinking of selling, they are conducting searches, and it gives you this kind of democratized view of how people are thinking, how people are feeling. So, what we've described, what we've kind of found, it's relatively simple in the way that you can look at this information. As the price of a stock rises, as the price of a stock rises, overall searches start to decrease. Right? So, a stock is going up. Generally speaking, we've found that searches for that stock in relation are going down. There's an inverse correlation there, and it, it seems to be that most investors are buy and hold type investors, um, and when they feel like their stock is in a comfortable position, they tend to kind of ease off in terms of searching for that stock. As uh, the price of a stock falls, search trend data increases. So we see the fall in price taking place, and we see a gradual increase in search data. And I think this describes the kind of difference between fear and greed. Greed is a much more comfortable emotion for, for a trader or an investor to feel, whereas fear, and I'm sure you guys would agree with this, it results in kind of edge, you know, edge of your seat, what's happening, what's going on, why is it going down, I'm losing money, this type of, uh, this type of uh, a reaction, and results in more panic, and this kind of tends to feed into the search data. Um, so short-term spikes in search can offer insights into, into stocks uh, to look for shorts. Generally speaking, we've not found um, search data to be particularly helpful in um, finding rising stocks. It's, it's a great short strategy. It's looking for panic, essentially. Looking, searching for panic is a great uh, strategy um, in, in terms of the search side of things. Um, so when you see a lull in search, it provides insight into greed, into a stock continuing to rise. Um, fair results in increased search behavior, which is, which is quite powerful. And you know, fair is, a, is, a, is, a, is a, a much greater emotion than, than say, greed in terms of influence in stock price. You know, what's, what's that old saying that balls go up the stairs, but bears jump out the window? Um, uh, and it's very much that same kind of thing where the influencing factors of fear and the, the panic that it creates in traders results in them you know, overly searching and you know, looking for information that can help them uh, you know, uh, overcome the difficulties that they're seeing. Okay, so next on our hit list. Um, so we have search anomalies, which is uh, the, our kind of more unusual side of things. Insider transactions, that's more of our unusual data. Order flow anomalies is the next one. So we pay a lot of attention um, to orders coming into the market as a way of you know, seeing the larger players in the market showing their hand. So we pay attention to block trades, large block purchases. Uh, block trades tend to show a lot of institutional trading and you know, larger companies being an influencing factor. These large trades are generally done over the phone, so and traders report them electronically after after the fact. So in, big institutions, um, you know, tend to trade in this type of way. So if a if a trader is trying to um, make a large trade on an ECN, you'll see the trade broken up into many smaller prints rather than you know one large one. So we pay attention to both. We pay attention to the size of the trades themselves and also a large number of trades over a short time horizon. So large bid ask and an unusual number of prints or trades. That's something we pay attention to in terms of the order flow side of things. And it all comes down to time. It's time's relation, the relationship of time with order flow size and the rate of orders. So this, this is a big thing that we pay attention to at unusual activity and a big influencing factor. Uh, in terms of how the market moves, because obviously it's orders that move the market. You know, it's traders buying, it's traders selling that have that big influencing effect. Um, so, 
this is the big, big thing that we pay attention to. It's kind of, you know, I'm sure you can tell it's influenced our name as well, unusual options activity. So unusual options activity is the, the big focus that we have at unusual activity. Like I said, it's in the name. Um, and we pay, we, we've just found this to be such an effective tool in analyzing stocks and how market participants are viewing stock information. So you've got large and unusual trades and block trades. That's what you're paying attention to. You're looking for large puts being bought. You're looking for large calls being bought. Um, you know, we're, we're paying attention to, the, to these puts and calls, we're paying attention to sweeps of, uh, of puts and calls. So sweeps are basically a summation of small amounts of contracts being executed around the same time. So very similar uh, in terms of what we were talking about, the order flow side of things, just a different product. Um, and it essentially gives you, you know, the equivalent of a, a lump sum transaction. And large option trades also in thinly traded securities because if you've got relatively large option trades in these smaller, less traded stocks, it's likely to have a profound influencing factor on those stocks. But ultimately what we pay attention to is traders that are in a, in a hurried state to get into a particular stock, right, uh, using these options and we're looking for uh, larger trades or a, a, a sweep as it's called. Um, to help us view the hand that these traders are trying to play. Okay, so why is unusual options activity important? Um, like I said, it's a big thing that we focus on. Why is it important? It gives you the indication of large players in the security. Um, these players generally don't want to be noticed in the underlying stock and are using options as a quick way to accumulate rights to that, to that stock. Um, and, and be able to trade it. It also serves as a looking glass into the upside or downside potential of the security. Um, for, for us, it, you know, it helps us give a gauge of how these other traders, these, these different groups of traders are viewing that stock. And it's similar uh, to the insider transactions from the CEO or the CFO in that it is someone or a, a large company or a large firm that has a lot of belief in this stock uh, or know something about this stock that is likely to result in, in, a, in, in strong movements and they're using this methodology as well as a large trade to basically play their hand. And oftentimes it can serve as a precursor to events, uh, news, earnings, etc. You'll tend to see a flurry of uh, options activity um, in, in these stocks. Um, another big factor for us is correlations. So we pay attention to how stocks are correlated to industry sectors, how they're correlated to other stocks, commodities, currencies, all of these relationships because we live, you know, we live in a globalized marketplace where stocks and you know, uh, bonds and commodities and everything is interlinked because of the light speed at which information is shared and these connections can be broken or made and they tend to have a great influencing factor on each other. So we, we pay attention to a lot of these correlations. Um, news and information that's going to affect a stock or a sector is also are likely to affect other stocks that are correlated to that particular instrument. So it gives you multiple opportunities to take advantage of the same information. Um, social media. Now, this is this is the big buzz phrase at the moment, and has been for the last few years or so. Um, social media. How to use social media data. This is something we've struggled with, and we've kind of found a few key ways to use it. But you know, there's a there's a lot of gimmicky ways that you'll find online of how you know companies use social media. We've found a few ways that we pay attention to. The first is and and is incredibly obvious is breaking news because the social media environment is just so accessible there is no cost and it's a, op, an opportunity for pretty much anyone to be the breaker of news to share market moving information in uh, in a in a, a format that's really quick and really simple you know you, anyone can send a tweet so 
in that way, it's really great. Um, so that's the big one. We, we filter Twitter and stock Twitter's data to find and discover breaking news as well as contributing. Um, we also pay attention to activity spikes. So on Twitter and stock Twitter, activity spikes when a stock experiences a, a significant increase in activity. The difference between um, search data and social media data is that when a stock is rising, um, you will oftentimes see activity, search activity decreasing. In social media, it's the opposite. Uh, so in social media, if a stock is moving, you will see increases in activity regardless. So overall, if it's rising, you'll see slow increases. If it's declining, you'll see slow increases, slow uh, increases in activity. If you're seeing um, short term, short term is where it has the largest influence. If you're seeing a, a quick, um, if you're seeing a quick effect, uh, you will see you know a massive increase in Twitter and stock tweets uh, uh, information. So we look for spikes, which are very very short term, and then we make comparisons on average activity. So a stock's baseline, uh, and then we compare how that conversation in that stock is changing slowly but surely over time. Okay, now this is this is the big the big enemy that, um, and I took on the voice there as well. The big enemy that a lot of traders are seeing out there at the moment: high frequency trading. Nah, uh, I, I'm not so sure um, if it's something to worry so much about. Obviously, like a lot of you know flash crash type of deals uh, can have, can have but influence. But overall, you know, it, it's really interesting to see how um, algos are being used by traders. So. With the higher frequency trading side of things, the, we pay attention to the action, action of automated trading alg algorithms. Sorry, this is, this is the definition. It's the action of automated trading algorithms utilizing powerful computers transacting at high speeds. Now, it's impossible to keep up with an individual algo and how that trades and how it's viewing the market. It, that's just not going to happen. But what you can do is see the overall positioning of buying and selling robots that can, you know, this information can be ascertained for, this, for the tape. So you don't care about the, the individual member of that herd, you care about the overall direction in which that herd of high frequency bots is pushing the market. And they can be, you know, trading really, really, you know, in, in incredibly short time frames. Um, they, they can be doing a lot of different methodologies, but it's the overall direction that you care about and the overall influencing factor that that information can have um, on the movement of price. So guys, um, we've been through a ton of information there and if you've got questions, feel free to ask right now and you know, if you've got any other ideas for other influencing factors, let me know. Um, there's a ton of information that we've gone through, you know, news, high frequency trading, correlations, uh, a bunch of different things you know, unusual options activity, there's, there's quite a bit going on there. But ultimately, what does all of this information have in common? What does this all have in common? So, you know, we can talk about, you know, the, the news and a lot of different things, but ultimately they have one thing in common, and that is volume. No matter what the influencing factor, it will always be shown in volume or supply and demand. Ultimately, all of the price action of a stock first appears in order flow and volume. This is the key metric, the key measure of how you know, a stock is viewed and how that stock moves. The most important volume condenses all of this information that's affecting the stock into a singular measure. And that's a very, very powerful statement because it doesn't matter what the influencing factor itself is, it matters that you have a way of measuring that influencing factor uh, and the effect that it can have on the stock. So spike in volumes will always relate to one or more of the influencing factors that we've described. There's always going to be some type of an influence. Um, what we do at Unusual Activity, and I hope you guys like the name, it's a pretty cool name. Um, what we do, like most news we pay attention to the influencing factors of stocks. So we put up news and technicals and unusual options and you know lots of this type of stuff. There's a lot of companies that provide this information. 
what we do that is different and unique is that we combine all of these influencing factors that we've spent quite a bit of time going through today with volume information. We combine all of those influencing factors with volume information so you know what is actually moving the stock because when you subscribe to news services it's news, 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 news. There's often no delineation. It's down to the trader to make a decision as to what they think should be traded. Whereas if you combine that information with volume, you will know that piece of news X has influenced the stock in this way and you, you, know, you can jump on that and catch that and be a part of that. Um, so volume is an incredibly important and powerful aspect of what we do and what we pay attention to. Um, it comes in uh, multiple ways of measuring and looking at it. So you can have average daily volume, five day, 10 day, 20 day, three month volume. Um, and you know this is this is something we pay attention to. We also look at relative volume, which is comparing the current volume for for today to the average volume for this time of day overall, and looking for volume anomalies. Um, so th those are two important ways. This is the big way. The most important thing that we pay attention to when it comes to volume is volume spikes. Right. This is real time volume. This is as it happens volume. This is a piece of news has come out and then this stock has you know, got high volume trades going through it right now. That type of volume. That's the key influencer. That's the key uh, outcome that you will see when a stock is moving like we saw Twitter move earlier on today. So what we pay attention to is influencer information plus volume confirmation which results in market moves. This is the key thing. This is what we pay attention to. Um, what we are at uh, unusualactivity.net is we're a trade ideas platform. So we don't call trades. We don't um, you know, say this is where you buy, this is where you sell. We don't do anything like that at all. What we do is process and put together information in a way that a user can you know, quickly and easily be able to generate trade ideas as to what they're likely to be doing how they want to trade. And this is a quick sneak peek of our platform itself. It's incredibly simple. Um, the red area you see at the top here, this is like a, this is the alert when it comes out. So if there's a major piece of, uh, if there's a, a major volume surge uh, in a particular stock, you'll see, you know, that area lights up to let you know that there is something that's moving the market here that you need to pay attention to. Um, so it's an incredibly simple platform. You've got, you know, all the major news, the influencing factors coming streaming in as they happen, as they're analyzed by a team. Uh, some of it is automated um, just to make this as fast as we possibly can. Um, but you know, the analysis pieces, of course, there we are, our team will be putting that information together. Um, so we're currently in um, in a phase where we're looking for early adopters of our product. Um, when we fully release the product, it will be $97 a month. We have hundreds of traders already signed up to the service, uh, which has been great. A lot of a lot of people have signed up. So when it's fully released, it will be $97 a month. Um, but we're going to have a great offer for everyone here today, uh, which is our early adopter special. Um, we'll be having live classes where we go into greater detail on all of these information sources that we report on and how to trade them. So webinar events where we talk about you know, how to use unusual options activity, webinar events where we talk about how to use the technical side of things that we put out there, the insider transactions, all these types of things, how to use them, how to benefit from them, uh, and how to adapt them to your trading strategy. We're also offering three months, three whole months of access to our unusual activity uh, trade ideas feed, uh, which is worth $291. And you know the webinars themselves are worth way, hey, way more than 297, but uh, I thought I'd be conservative in our valuations there. So um, you know that's that, that's a chunk of change, but we're offering a 77% discount for everyone that's here today. So for $97 a quarter, you will get access to our real-time feed. Um, you know you've got the subscription price for the life of your subscription, unusualactivity.net forward slash live is where you can access it. Um, you've got a completely no risk 
30-day money-back guarantee. So try our product, see if it's for you, apply it to your trading. If it's for you, by all means use it and um, you know, you'll get the greatest benefit out of it. If you find that it doesn't suit your trading strategy or style so much or you don't have the time for it, we'll be happy to give you your money back. So guys, if there's any questions, feel free to ask away. If you want to know anything specific about the information that we provide um, or anything else, by all means, ask away. It's you know, a huge discount, 77%. Um, you know, as, we, as we develop this platform, it's a great chance to get, us, get in with us early doors because we will be a major uh, platform in terms of providing news and information uh, in the trading landscape. Um, like I said, 97 bucks for the quarter, every three months for the life of your subscription, unusualactivity.net forward slash live. And just got a question. Um, so we start the service at uh, around 8.30 a.m. Eastern every single day. It's, it's a U.S.-based service, so it's the U.S. trading hours that it largely functions in. Um, so that's going to be the main time that everything, you know, that the information that we put out will be available um, and you know you can of course ask questions uh, via email uh, about any of the information that we put out. Um, we, we are working on a voice aspect to the service uh, soon as well so there's a lot of cool things that are taking place and it's pretty pretty exciting. Oh guys I've just realized that I'm, I'm uh, going over time here um, so I'm going to wrap things up and if there's any questions at all guys feel free to email us, uh, email us support at unusualactivity.net and we look forward to having you try out our service.